Good morning. Look at this fog. I feel like I'm in one of my dream sequences and I don't want to wake up. I really did not plan to make a video today, but when I woke up, I saw the fog and of course I was like, I have to make a video. I'm actually sick currently and that's why I sound like I have smoked a pack of cigarettes. Yeah, I just woke up a couple days ago and suddenly my voice was gone. <laughs> So the camera that I decided to take out for filming is a Canon R6 and for photography, ironically, is the Sony a7C II with the 20-70G lens. So it's a little ironic because I originally wanted to use the a7C II for video and I'm using it primarily for photography. There is a reason for that. In any future travels, I'm just going to take one camera body and two camera lenses. <laughs> I was gonna say one camera, one lens, but let's be real, I have them, so I'm gonna pack them and I'm gonna use them. So the images I'm gonna show you are going to be a combination of the FE 20 to 70 millimeter F4 G lens, as well as a 70 to 200 F4 macro lens. It's, oh, hold on, one second. One thing I'm getting used to uh, with the a7C is that there is no joystick. So that's a bit of an adjustment that I've been facing that I'm not really sure how I feel. The thing is, it's not a deal breaker because I had the Canon 6D and the Canon 6D did not have a joystick. And ooh, it's starting to rain. <laughs> but I think I can adapt. I will find a way to bridge those gaps. The struggles that I have with this camera is just that I am not used to the menu system, though it is the newer menu system, so it is a lot better to navigate. The buttons and dials are in different places. When it comes to front dials, I'm used to the R6 being up here, whereas the Sony a7C2 is over here. Anything that you purchase, you're going to face trade-offs, and you just have to accept that. You just have to ask yourself and take inventory and really know yourself and your shooting styles and your shooting habits. Before you buy another camera body, ask yourself what are the top three or top five things in your camera body that you use all the time. I think it's very important to think critically about how much you value the physical dials and experience of using the camera body rather than image quality. I think image quality these days is negligible. They're all pretty much the same, almost the same. I don't think we need to be pixel peeping anymore. I think we need to really ask ourselves what are the buttons and dials that we very much prioritize. No firmware update is going to change the position of dials and buttons. The other thing that you need to consider is whether you're going to be happy with the lens choices. I was able to get a 70-200 macro lens with Sony. I don't think that really exists with Canon. I'm always looking around because this time last year I did see a wolf and thankfully they were like maybe 200 feet away or I don't know. Oh shit, it's, it's starting to rain. I better go in now. I don't know what it's like to walk and talk with this. I don't have stabilization on but we're gonna see. It's just trickling. Now ah, what was I rambling about? Oh shit, is it really raining? I think it's just wind, and the wind is knocking all the raindrops off the trees, the tree leaves. Anyways, it's really important to have everything that you need for a morning shoot at the ready the night before. Have your batteries charged, have your SD cards formatted, have your the lenses you think you're going to use, and just make sure that you get a good night's sleep the night before. Be prepared to just jump into your pants and run out and make the most of it. I'm going to be taking some landscape photography workshops and I believe a lot of them expect their attendees to wake up pretty early and be at the ready. So basically I'm doing a dry run. I want to be prepared. There's a raven taunting me. <laughs> Are you done? No. Oh, it's coming towards me. Did you know that ravens can talk? 
just like parrots, they can they can say hi. Uh, yeah, that's what living in the woods for a few years does to you. You just kind of think everything talks to you. I've named this tree Gary. I am a huge proponent of sharing even if your stuff isn't the greatest. I think there's a lot of value in documenting your journey so that when you become better, you have something to look back on and have a timestamp to say, hey, this time last year you took this really shitty macro shot and today your macro stuff is amazing. So I'm trying to look at it that way and trying not to be so scared of posting terrible photos. I think we're not going to learn if we're going to keep on holding ourselves back or telling ourselves or listening to that little voice inside of us that says that we're no good. I think it's important to be comfortable with showing our growing pains. I'm gonna go get the 7200. I'll be right back. I really love this lens. It's everything I've ever dreamed of. It's, it's just the best focal range in my opinion. And it's got macro capabilities. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking and take some photos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!